against the resurgent George Foreman. And along with Barry Milligan, I'm Dave Reed. As you see, Clay Delmeda entering the uh, ring here at SeaWorld, the Brazilian national champion. And of course, he's going to have his hands full, Barry Milligan, against a very different George Foreman. That's right, the new George Foreman. But the trainers of Dale Maida wanted to make it perfectly clear that this guy did not come here just to be another opponent for the former heavyweight champion. He came here with one purpose in mind, and that was to win. You know, Dale Maida out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, they say uh, that he is something of a journeyman and should be the South American national champion. That has been a hotly contested debate between Clay de Almeida and Alduso Rodriguez over the last couple of years, but the handlers of de Almeida certainly think their man is number one in South America. Well, he realizes he may, ne may never get a fight at, at Mike Tyson. Not many people will, for that matter, but this is a great opportunity for him to put himself on the map. That's right, and possibly get a ranking. You know, it's so important to get that ranking. With that, you get notoriety, you get exposure, and to be perfectly frank about it, you get the big ticket fights. Abby. You know, Foreman says, look, I'm not going to come out the first two fights, not the first five fights, and try to fight Mike Tyson. I won't be ready for that. People were, get, were really criticizing him for not going for a big-time fight right off the back. But he says, look, I'm a new guy. I've started from scratch here, and I am building a brand-new career. And George Foreman entering the ring area here at SeaWorld. And at 41 years of age, he still draws a crowd. Welcoming the former heavyweight champion of the world. And who would forget that fight against Joe Frazier back in January of 1973 when Joe Frazier was at his peak and the left hook, nothing but awesome, and George Foreman knocked him out in round two. Oh boy, one of the most dramatic fights in the history of heavyweight boxing. George Foreman equally a predator along with Joe Frazier. Back in those days, uh, when the heavyweight ranks were probably at their greatest, you had Foreman, Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and another one of the biggest punchers of all time, Ernie Shavers, back in those days. Let us not forget Ken Norton, That's well, right. was active back then. That's right. George Foreman, since his championship at the 1968 Olympics, his professional career included 38 straight victories before being stopped by Muhammad Ali course in Zaire back on October 30th of 1974 the famous rope dope fight that's right boy George probably never been more frustrated in his entire career than that night in Zaire that he was knocked out by Ali after eight rounds a frustrated and exhausted foreman by that point who had chased Ali around the ring for eight long rounds and Muhammad retaining or taking away foreman's world championship fight George Ford would be the first to tell you that fight devastated me. It devastated his life. He didn't think at that point in time anyone could beat him. And Muhammad Ali took him that night. And essentially that set him on the road to retirement. There was one day where he fought five guys in one day, beat them all. Um, eventually lost to Jimmy Young, and that started the right, retirement. Let's go up to the ring announcer. Let's stay vision. In the blue corner. Weighing in at 231 and one quarter pounds. Wearing the white trunk with red stripe from San Paulo, Brazil, the uncrowned champion, Manuel Clay de Almeida. De Almeida. And in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with white stripe, he is the former heavyweight champion of the world with a record of 63 wins, two losses. 62 KOs. He's on his comeback to meet Tyson with 15 consecutive TOs. The 1968 gold medal champion from Mexico City. None other than George Foreman. George Foreman. The referee for this event, Max Parker Jr. Well, Barry Milligan, George Foreman, an intimidating sight still. 253 pounds. He's fought as low as 240 in his comeback. He fought at 220 when he was in his prime 10 years ago. Yep, and he really doesn't think the extra weight has hindered him as referee Max Parker Jr. giving the final instructions. I wish you luck. Touch gloves. Come on, box down. 
George Foreman, 68 Olympic gold medalist, has turned to the divinity during his layoff before becoming or reincarnating his career as a boxer. Yep, has been a preacher and made that well known as I was interviewing him earlier today. And you mentioning that gold medal, I asked George if he was amazed about the money and how much that had to do with him, with his decision to come back. He said, well, I won one medal. I don't need another one. Uh, he's after Mike Tyson, no question about that. He wants the big money fight. And he feels like he has to. He has to earn his due because he, the one way to get the big money fight, Barry, the only way to get the big money fight is to impress the promoters. That's right. Looking for a first-round knockout here. George coming out really throwing the big guns. He had a first-round knockout fight before last, right before the new year back in December 28th. He fought David Jaco out in Sacramento, California, knocked him out in the first round and had a much tougher fight than many expected last time out. January 22nd, or 27th rather, he fought Mark Young up in Rochester, New York. That fight lasted seven rounds, which was about three or four more than it was supposed to last. Foreman fighting out of Houston nowadays. Still preaches several nights a week at non-denominal church, non-denominational church. We'll get it out in Houston. 15 straight knockouts since coming on. Still a resident. Retirement. Yep. Uh, a resident still of Texas. His wife and eight children back at home, I know, cheering on their dad here, looking for his 16th consecutive win and knockout since returning to the ring. Perhaps the most amazing thing about George Foreman, he's 60 and 2 in his career. 57 of his 62 bouts have resulted in knockouts. But nothing short of Austin. He is delivering some pistols. Manuel De Omega right now. Yep, firing up, winding up, delivering those heavy body blows. George, of course, with the great ring sense over the years, perhaps as much savvy as anyone in the game right now. He says for the he goes for the knockout just by nature. He knows of no other way to fight. One thing that has changed about George Foreman over the years he's laid off. He, he used to fight with just almost unbridled rage. That was what motivated him. He doesn't do that anymore. The, ring, the good ring sense, you know. He doesn't have that sheer athletic ability to do that anymore. He knows he has to be smart in carrying the weight he does. He has to pace himself somewhat. De Almeida, as you see, fighting back here gamely in round number one. His managers, let it be known, perfectly clear. Their guy didn't come here to lay down for a former heavyweight champion. Clay De Almeida certainly has aspirations of his own, and he's looking to act some of those out here tonight in SeaWorld. Foreman got a right in there. And he's been hammering Delmeda to the body throughout much of the first round of a 10-round affair. We'll see what kind of toll that will have on the Brazilian national champ. Pretty good three or four punch combination by Foreman on the ropes. Coming down to the end of round one, back to SeaWorld in just a moment. Hey, getting Delmeda locked onto the ropes, and you see, oh, doing the great job getting underneath Foreman. One who knows perfectly well the old boxing adage, if you kill the body, the head goes with it. And he did a nice job there working on De Almeida. In between rounds, Foreman did not sit. In fact, he was gesturing out to the crowd, actually having a conversation with some of them. De Almeida getting the better percentage-wise punches, but Foreman throwing more of them and with more power. Absolutely. You see Foreman somewhat unorthodox with his defensive style, but Oh, that's been that's been the style he's had ever since Mexico City. Twenty years ago, he wraps those arms over. It really doesn't allow you. One thing it doesn't allow that defensive style is very much counter punching. He's pretty much going to take whatever Dale Almeida has to offer. Pick his own spots. I tell you, Dale Almeida is doing about the same thing. He seems very content to let Foreman punch away at him here early in the fight, leaning against the ropes. Maybe in an attempt to wear Foreman out. Bear in mind, Foreman at 40 years plus. It is Dale Maida who's breathing heavily at this point, however. Pretty good left right. Good straight right hand by Foreman. You saw George jab with the right hand and lean with the left or lead with the, the right. That's been one of the big adjustments in his in his different boxing style. We've told you, George wants to make it perfectly clear. This is a new George Foreman. And one of the new things. 
things about him is a new style. He, he'll go lefty and lead with that right hand, and he's changed his footwork up a little, a little bit to uh, disguise some of those big punches as he gets a little bit off balance there. Well, he had everything behind that one. All that was was a slip. No damage done. Del Man has slipped out of that one and the corner went right around him. Yeah, George trying to wind up just a little bit too much. I tell you, you get that 250 plus momentum going, it's hard to stop. You betcha, particularly when there's only a couple of ropes there to stop you. Looks like Dale Maida may have a little bit of a cut. Right above that right eye. Yeah, it's over the right eye. Foreman doing a nice job with that left. The jab has been good and the hook already has been damaging as well. Foreman doing a nice job with the right cross. And there you see a difference too, the uppercut. George Foreman never really was one to throw the uppercut, but that's certainly a big weapon in his current arsenal. Foreman's got Dale Mayer hurt right now. He's just stalking it. Yeah, another good left hand. Got up to the eye area and will affect that cut. Almeida hanging in there at this point, but he has taken some tremendous body shots. I don't know if George Foreman is hitting with the same power that he did 10 years ago. I don't know if anybody uh, can make that determination, but if it's too much more powerful than the plays he's doing right now, I know I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, he's doing a nice job, too, of combining his punches. From George Foreman, as you see him there, setting up with the jab, a nice stiff jab right there, and that could very well have been the good stiff left that opened up the cut over the right eye of the Brazilian. We moved to round three in a scheduled 10 rounder. Foreman still showing disdain for the stool in between rounds. Didn't didn't sit down at all. And I have Foreman winning each of the first two rounds by a 10-9 score. Well, no question George Foreman's out to prove himself. And if it takes standing on a stool to do it, he's going to do it. He's going to do everything he can to try and get that title shot at Mike Tyson. That's right. And, you know, Foreman considers himself a prospect. You know, that may seem a little bit unusual to boxing observers and even people who follow the game closely, but, you know, he certainly knew he couldn't come back, fight two or three times, and be ready to challenge Tyson. He didn't come back to this game as a former heavyweight champion. He came back to the fight game as a prospect. And through 15 fights, he's proven himself to be just that. Well, you know, the prospect idea aside, it it's not necessarily who you beat in order to get to a heavyweight title fight. It's the crowd that you draw and the type of following that puts it together. I mean, if, exactly you can, right. if you can fill up an arena like a George Foreman can, then you've got a better shot at getting a, a fight against a heavyweight champion than your average fighter would. Yeah, absolutely. Foreman just pushing down. Oh, boy. Good right down. hand. Came over the top a little bit with that right hand. You see Foreman coming up with the left uppercut, splitting those hands. That opens things up for that good overhand right. Right above us now. Good left. Del Mata just about ready to go. Del Mata hanging on. Max Parker in there separating the two fighters. Del Mata's hurt. Got that cut going again. Yeah, Del Mata is hurt, Dave. Trying to fight back and doing so gamely here. But the big right cross from Foreman, and he's coming over the top with it a couple of times. That has really done some damage. No real defense by Del Mata now. Got the cover. Oh, big right hand got oh, in that's there. that's another good right hand. Foreman looking at Max Parker as if to say, this guy may need a standing eight. Del Mata, as you see, getting peppered with lefts and rights. And that's it. Max Parker says that's all. It's over. And rightfully so. Del Mata did not throw a punch in the last 45 seconds. All he could do was cover up and let George Foreman hammer him. And so George Foreman, winner by TKO over the Brazilian national champion, Clay Del Mata, who could not take those piston-like jabs so indicative of George Foreman. And we'll be back with more from SeaWorld in just a moment. Don't go away. To 61-2 and two now, his 16th straight knockout since his retirement. And... Clay Dalmeda, the recipient of many and often the right jabs of George Foreman and Barry Milligan. Again, Foreman, you came into the ring, you just knew he had the confidence to put this one together. He knew he was going to win it the whole way. That's right, and, you know, condi conditioning not really a factor when you can throw the number of punches he did through three rounds and be as effective as he was. Remember, this man right here, the former heavyweight champion, George Foreman, the winner had a 10-year TKO. Layoff. And two minutes and 14 seconds of the third round, 
George Foreman. So George Foreman continues his trek to try and meet Mike Tyson for what he hopes would be a heavyweight title fight. 16-0 and 16 straight knockouts, as you see, since his retirement. So Foreman continues the string, and we'll be back to SeaWorld in just a moment. Some of the, the new George Foreman in terms of your style here, too. You were leading with that right hand, a little difference in footwork, and uh, you really changed that and added to your repertoire. Yeah, you